In the realm of health science, a paper was published that is nothing short of groundbreaking. This paper, a product of rigorous research and scientific innovation, was unveiled on the 19th of July, 2024, in the esteemed journal Nature Metabolism. The revelations within have the potential to redefine our understanding of diet health and the intricate workings of the human body. Firstly, it sheds new light on the role of GLP-1, a hormone we already knew plays a significant part in conditions related to insulin resistance, such as obesity, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and the cluster of conditions known as metabolic syndrome. Yet, the mechanism behind GLP-1 depletion in these conditions remained a mystery, that is, until now. The paper unveils new data showing how a poor diet can deplete levels of this anti-obesity hormone, GLP-1. It also brings to light the role of a specific gut microbiome intestinal cell axis in boosting GLP-1 production. This is a breakthrough as it suggests a potential preventive measure against metabolic syndrome. The research team's investigation began with a mouse model, where they found that levels of a particular bacterium in the gut, known as desulfovibrio, were elevated. Interestingly, this elevation was associated with lower GLP-1 levels. The team also discovered that a westernized obesogenic diet was sufficient to increase desulfovibrio levels, thereby suggesting a direct link between diet, microbiome changes, and GLP-1 depletion. But the paper does not stop at identifying the problem. It also speculates on a potentially novel benefit of animal-based foods. This opens up new avenues for thought and exploration in the quest to combat metabolic syndrome and related conditions. This groundbreaking paper not only answers several burning questions, but also inspires further inquiry into how diet and the microbiome can influence health. It is a testament to the power of scientific discovery and its potential to shape the future of healthcare. Revelation about GLP-1 and its potential implications for combating metabolic syndrome is a major breakthrough. The research presented in this paper sets the stage for a new chapter in our understanding of diet, the microbiome, and metabolic health. Let's dive into the role of GLP-1, a hormone that has a profound impact on our health. GLP-1, or glucagon-like peptide 1, is an anti-obesity hormone that is often depleted in insulin resistance-related disorders like obesity, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and metabolic syndrome. These are all conditions that have a common thread. They're typically accompanied by low HDL cholesterol, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, excess abdominal fat, and high blood sugar. But what has remained a mystery until now is how GLP-1 becomes reduced in these conditions. The game-changing study we're discussing today traveled down this unknown path and found something quite intriguing. The researchers discovered that the levels of a specific bacterium in the gut, named, were elevated. What's fascinating is that higher levels of correlated with lower levels of GLP-1. So, we have an inverse relationship here. As goes up, GLP-1 goes down. But what causes levels to increase? The researchers found that a westernized diet, one that's high in fats and sugars, was sufficient to increase levels. This suggests a direct link between our diet, changes in our gut microbiome, and GLP-1 depletion. This relationship isn't just limited to mice, the study found similar results in humans with metabolic syndrome. In these individuals, elevated levels were associated with reduced GLP-1. The researchers went a step further and showed causality. They found that directly reduces GLP-1 production. So how does this happen? It all comes down to hydrogen sulfide metabolism, produces hydrogen sulfide in the gut, which in excess overwhelms the gut's detoxification systems. This hydrogen sulfide then damages the mitochondria in the intestinal L cells, which are the cells responsible for producing GLP-1. The damage leads to decreased ATP production and disrupts mitochondrial membrane potential. As a result, these L cells can't produce enough GLP-1 leading to lower hormone levels and contributing to insulin resistance disorders like metabolic syndrome. A seemingly simple change in gut bacteria can have far-reaching effects on our health. Our gut microbiome is a universe in its own right, and its inhabitants play a crucial role in our health. This is where our story takes an intriguing turn. The researchers found a causal relationship between a gut bacterium called disulfovibrio and the depletion of the anti-obesity hormone GLP-1. Here's how it works. Disulfovibrio produces a compound called hydrogen sulfide within our gut. In moderate amounts, this compound is harmless. However, when the levels of disulfovibrio increase, as in the case of a poor diet, the production of hydrogen sulfide also escalates. This excess hydrogen sulfide overwhelms the gut's detoxification systems, 
causing harm to the mitochondria in the intestinal L cells, the very cells responsible for producing GLP-1. When the mitochondria are damaged, they can't produce enough ATP, which disrupts the mitochondrial membrane potential. As a result, these L cells can't produce enough GLP-1, leading to lower hormone levels in our body. This in turn contributes to insulin resistance disorders like metabolic syndrome. It's a domino effect, starting with our diet, which alters our gut microbiota, leading to an increase in desulfovibrio, hydrogen sulfide production, and finally GLP-1 depletion and potential metabolic disorders. This pathway from gut microbiota to GLP-1 levels opens up new avenues for potential treatments. This groundbreaking research has shown us that the universe within our gut has a profound effect on our health, and by understanding it we can potentially find new ways to combat metabolic diseases. Now that we comprehend the issue, how can we mitigate it? The researchers didn't merely point out the problem, they also suggested a probable solution. The study discovered that bismuth subsalicylate, a common over-the-counter drug found in Pepto-Bismol, can decrease hydrogen sulfide levels. This bismuth compound was used to treat mice on a Western diet and resulted in preventing weight gain, lowering hydrogen sulfide in the feces, reducing fat mass, preventing the expansion of harmful bacteria, and significantly boosting GLP-1 levels. That's quite a remarkable array of benefits for something you can easily acquire at your neighborhood drugstore. But that's not all. Apart from bismuth subsalicylate, the study also underscored the potential advantages of consuming specific animal-based foods. Foods like fish, lean meats, and dairy products could help manage the gut microbiota, potentially lessening the amounts of harmful bacteria and encouraging the growth of beneficial ones. This could cause an increase in GLP-1 production, presenting a natural method to fight metabolic syndrome. It's crucial to remember that these findings are encouraging, but further research is imperative. However, the potential is present, and it's thrilling to contemplate the opportunities that are in the future. This study not only augments our comprehension of metabolic syndrome, but also yields promising leads for potential treatments. So, the next time you're about to grab a snack, bear in mind, your choice could have a larger effect on your health than you might consider. That's it for today's video on the groundbreaking insights into the gut microbiome and obesity. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Your support is what keeps us motivated to bring more such enlightening content to you. Also, subscribe to our channel for more such insightful content. We regularly post videos on numerous health-related topics that could be beneficial for you and your loved ones. If you think this video could help someone, don't hesitate to share it with your friends and family to spread the knowledge. Remember, you're playing a part in their health journey too. Finally, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Do you have any questions or insights to share? Please leave them in the comments section below. We appreciate your engagement and try to respond to as many comments as possible. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy, stay informed. Until next time.